Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Dudley Weaver with a few thoughts on the question of unity. In his inaugural address to the nation, President Biden called for a new emphasis on unity in our country. While the words sound nice and give some measure of reassurance to those of us who have grown weary with of the bickering and fighting, Considering the deep and bitter division in our country, the words seem rather naive. It simply isn't going to happen. There will never come a day when we will all agree. Unity, however, this coming together to which the president calls us as a nation, has nothing to do with uniformity of opinion. In the church, we understand our unity not as a matter of uniformity, but interdependent diversity. St. Paul uses the metaphor of the human body to give expression to this. The body has many parts, each different, each with its distinct function, and each useless, apart from the whole. He writes, if the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would be the sense of smell? Each part works together for the good of the whole. Another image of the church from the, in early Christian art and theology is the boat. We are passengers together in the boat that gives us safe passage through the storms of life. When we get into trouble, though, where we get into trouble, though, is when we begin to think that one person or one group doesn't have a place, and we begin to throw them overboard, or they us, because we look differently or believe differently. The ship then becomes more of a pleasure craft for only the right kind of people rather than a mighty ship of grace that rescues and saves all who profess faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So how do we manage this unity expressed in interdependent diversity? How do we manage to get along whether as citizens of this country or citizens of the church, the kingdom of God? The answer, I think, is found in this command of Jesus. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Now I can assure you that there have been people in my life whom I have deemed pretty much unlovable precisely because of the way they have acted towards me. And praying for them has been a significant challenge. I could no more elicit a warm feeling for them in my heart, on demand, than I could a sneeze. The love to which Jesus calls us has nothing to do with what we feel, but everything to do with what we do. Love means seeking your neighbor's highest good, even if you must grit your teeth to do it. Love means listening patiently even when you don't agree with the one who is speaking. It is tempering your speech so as to avoid conflict, even if you must bite your tongue to do it. And it is recognizing that there are some things more important than winning the day for your side or your group. That is always most effectively when practiced, effectively done when practiced mutually. But even when it is not mutually practiced, it is possible for us to practice it. And indeed, we may well find that when we do practice it, others might be inclined to follow our example. We will not always agree. We will sometimes disagree vehemently. But because we practice love, we can live together passengers in the same ship, either the ship of grace or the ship of state.
May God bless you this day and every day, and may God grant you grace, as I pray God will grant me grace to love those who are different than I.